My name is Susie Singer Carter, and I'm a filmmaker and an advocate for those living with Alzheimer's and their caregivers. It's a cause near and dear to my heart after caring for my mom, who lived with Alzheimer's for 16 years. I've witnessed firsthand the tremendous amount of confusion and misunderstanding that surrounds this disease and has led to a pervasive amount of stigma within our families, communities, and sadly, our healthcare system, the latter being my focus today. I'm going to get a little nerdy here. When a person has Alzheimer's, they are slowly but surely losing rational thinking skills. These are the tools that we use for understanding and manipulating information. But what they're not going to lose is their intuitive thinking skills. These are the primary skills we need to enjoy companionship, to enjoy beauty in any form. That brings us to enjoy feelings like happiness, love, and ecstasy. My mother still knew me till the day she died. Her connection to the world was through me. Only I could bring her back to herself and remind her of things. But when I couldn't see her, she disappeared. That's why advocates are essential for people with dementia and Alzheimer's. And this was never clearer than when we were in the throes of COVID, when essential caregivers were no longer allowed to interact with their person. That person grew sick or, or sicker, and many simply died from failure to thrive. They disappeared. Throughout my mother's journey with Alzheimer's, we encountered too many providers who sadly had very little to zero understanding and or experience with Alzheimer's disease. I experienced doctors losing patience with my mom to the point of sheer exasperation. One doctor took me aside and asked me if I needed a prescription of Valium before I left the hospital. Others would ask my mom important questions that most people with Alzheimer's can't possibly answer, like, are you taking a blood thinner? And they would ask her without confirming with me. When my mom was admitted into the hospital during COVID, I wasn't allowed to visit her. And my inability to articulate from my mother was nothing less than disastrous. The hospital admission records indicated that my mom was admitted with an altered mental state. And it was attributed to organ failure, which she didn't have. The records also said she was not able to give any meaningful history. But what they missed was the fact that she had Alzheimer's. And had they spoken to me, her designated caregiver, I could have provided meaningful history. Often nurses, techs, and doctors just don't have the time to dig through a person's medical records. So they don't always know that a person has dementia. But at the end of the day, providers really need to know when a person has dementia. If they don't, dire results can happen. Agitation, for example, can be misdiagnosed as a psychosis of some sort, resulting in a patient being admitted into a psych ward where they are mentally restrained with a black label drug, one that's particularly bad for someone with dementia, like Depakote that can permanently alter the quality of someone's life. That happened to my mom. Additionally, the treatment for people with dementia is very often massively different than those without the disease. Another example from my mom was last year when she was given a PEG tube in the hospital without their consulting with me. And the fact is there's adequate research that shows PEG tubes do not increase the quantity or quality of life significantly in people with very advanced dementia. I think information like that would be very helpful for the vast majority of providers. I think at the very least, a basic understanding of the disease should be mandatory. Like when my mom was in the hospital and I hadn't seen her for eight days, I called and asked the charge nurse if I could FaceTime with my mom. And her reply was, honey, she doesn't talk. Well, the nurse didn't understand dementia. When people with dementia can't speak anymore, it's assumed that they can't hear, they can't understand or make decisions. And the truth is that people with dementia, even advanced dementia, are making decisions all the time. These decisions can often be labeled as a behavior problem. But the truth is that the person is communicating a feeling or a need or some aspect of choice in the best way that they can. Too often it's disregarded because they have dementia. They're confused. They don't know what they want. When really what we should be doing is paying more attention to what's going on and looking deeper into the context of the situation and trying to understand what it is about this interaction that's not going well for the person. How can it be done differently because the provider is more capable of changing their approach 
than the person is with dementia to understand things differently. So it really is a total reframing from the standpoint of being as empathetic as possible with the person with dementia to understand what they're experiencing, what they may be communicating, what they may need, and how their needs can be met within the best manner possible. We just have to take off our old hats and put on a different set of glasses to be able to do that. This is where caregivers and advocates become so important, so essential. They have to be members of the healthcare team when a person has dementia. Finally, I had a tech tell me last year not to worry because my mom was demented. She had holes in her brains and didn't know what was going on. But the truth is people with dementia have lost the past and the future but they are fully immersed in the present. Dementia leaves people 100% in the present, fully experiencing everything. Thank you so much for allowing me to give you my perspective. And thank you so much for taking the time to want to understand people with Alzheimer's and dementia better so that their quality of life can be improved.